Hi. So, today we're going to learn about a disease of lung called pneumonia. There are five parts to this lesson and I'm going to talk about the characteristics, types, diagnosis and prevention of this disease. Before we discuss what is pneumonia or the disease per se, let's first look at the healthy state. Meet a happy Sam who met the three most basic needs of his survival, the air, food and water. Food and water go into our body through our mouth. But what about air? How is it processed? Lungs are bag-like organs of our body which help us in processing air. We have two lungs, one on each side of the chest. Lungs expand and contract as we breathe in and breathe out air. You can clearly make out these movements in the given animation. Each lung is divided into lobes. The right lung has got three lobes and the topmost lobe on the right side of Sam is a superior lobe which is highlighted in blue color. And the middle lobe in the green color and the inferior lobe is represented in pink color. The left lung has got only two lobes primarily because it needs more space to accommodate the heart. The upper lobe is highlighted again in the light blue color and the lower lobe is highlighted in the pink color. Normally, as we breathe in, air moves freely through a large pipe called trachea which is also called a windpipe, then through large tubes called bronchi, through smaller tubes called bronchioles and finally into tiny round air sacs called alveoli. So let's have a closer look at these tiny sacs called alveoli. When we breathe in, each air sac inflates like a small balloon and takes in oxygen. When we breathe out, the sac deflates and sends out carbon dioxide from our body. If we have pneumonia, the movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide within our body is impaired. Alveoli get filled up with infectious fluid, making it difficult for the body to process air. Hence, pneumonia is defined as any infection of the lung parenchyma caused due to bacteria, viruses, fungi or parasites. It occurs when the defense mechanism of the human body is impaired or when the resistance of host is generally reduced. Now let's look at the classification of pneumonia. The first type of pneumonia is lobar where one lobe of our lungs is affected. The second type is called the bronchopneumonia where many areas of both lungs are affected. In some cases of pneumonia, a large collection of fluid and pus called an abscess may form inside one of our lungs and if the same abscess forms around the outside of our lungs, it's called an empyema. You can actually make out this pink colored patch on the lung which is called an empyema. Let's see how pneumonia manifests itself. That is, what symptoms of our body make us feel that we have pneumonia. Pneumonia affects many parts of our body such as the brain, lungs and the muscles. In our central nervous system, pneumonia causes symptoms such as confusion, headache and a decreased level of consciousness in elderly patients. The respiratory system is affected by a productive cuff which generates sputum. Sputum is this uh, mucus-like infectious fluid we cough out when we have a wet cough. Pneumonia also causes difficulty in breathing, denoted as shortness of breath. And we may as well experience a sharp and stabbing chest pain. Fatigue and muzzle pain are very common to pneumonia and pneumonia also causes fever with shaking chills. In severe conditions, pneumonia causes a blue tinged skin a decreased thirst, convulsions and also vomiting. How can a physician diagnose pneumonia? On physical examination, 
a physician may find that we have a low blood pressure a high heart rate and a respiratory rate which is faster than the normal examination of the chest may be normal but may show a decreased chest expansion on the affected side harsh breath sounds called crackles or rails may also be heard over the affected area the chest x ray presentations of pneumonia can be divided into lobar and bronco pneumonia the lobar pneumonia is seen in most of the bacterial and community acquired pneumonias and it appears as a lung consolidation on the affected lobe of the lung a bronco pneumonia is seen in aspiration pneumonias and it may present with bilateral opacities primarily in the bases of the lungs a microbiological examination is ideally required during severe stages of pneumonia for people that do not respond to treatment a sputum culture should be considered in those hospitalized for severe disease both sputum and blood cultures are recommended the viral infections can be confirmed via detection of either the virus or its antigens with a culture so let me talk about how one can prevent pneumonia Vaccinating children against a bacteria called Streptococcus pneumoniae leads to a decrease of these infections in children and surprisingly in adults as well because many adults acquire this infection from children Nevertheless a Streptococcus pneumoniae vaccine is also available for adults Treating all other health problems such as HIV AIDS diabetes mellitus and malnutrition can be useful in indirectly treating pneumonia since we have already discussed that pneumonia occurs due to a general lack of resistance in the human body avoiding smoke can very effectively prevent pneumonia as is hand hygiene and coughing into one's sleeves in children less than 6 months of age exclusive breastfeeding reduces both the risk and severity of the disease in summary pneumonia is a lung disease caused due to microorganisms when our defense mechanism is impaired but the good news is that pneumonia is an easily preventable disease provided considerable measures are taken to avoid the disease